The Hon. Shane Jones. Thank you, Mr Chair, for providing this opportunity to add to the great speeches from this side of the House and isolate yet another egregious example of the errors that riddle this piece of legislation. So I draw your attention to the misnamed proposed bill in front of us that unwisely uses the word improved. So I wonder whether it's a spelling mistake and we ought to be dealing with improvident. So because the notion that the bill is going to ameliorate, the notion that the bill is going to minimise, the notion that the bill is going to reduce the negative externalities surrounding the wholesale slaughter of that valuable water resource by the Friends of the National Party, sir, shows actually that it cannot, sir, it cannot stand, sir, that the word improve. Now, I know self-improvement is needed by that member over there, sir, but for fear of inviting an unnecessary uh, level of criticism from you, I'll overlook his many failings in, uh, in, in, in other places. So I want to come back as to why the minister is so insistent on, sir, selling a series of broken dreams to the people that are going to suffer the burden, the people who are going to pay the costs for this misnamed piece of legislation. So when we think of an improvement, sir, we are actually dwelling upon how can society, how can society, sir, through this piece of legislation, with this ill-fitting name, derive maximum benefit through to, in terms of the water resource through this misnamed piece of legislation. So, so it cannot stand that it ought to be seen as an example of improvement. Because, sir, there is no improvement of the standards of local democracy. Sir, there is no improvement in relation to the efficiency or the transparency of how this valuable resource is used in this area. So improvement cannot be applied to that part of the agenda. Sir, it also will not actually remind the people of that part of the country how valuable, how valuable and the multifaceted nature of that value, sir, in the rivers. It's a, sir, I cannot be held responsible for the absence of an education by the, 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 the rowdiest member of that side of the government. That, sir, lies with Anne, Anne Tolly. And if she can apply her standards to Paul Quinn, a few of us might start to take her a bit more seriously. However, I come back, sir, to the name, to the name of this legislation and warn the Minister and actually, in the gentlest of terms, remind the backers of the current government who have driven these ministers to take this very dangerous step so that they can maximise for their narrow self-centred purposes, the exploitation of water, sir, because if improvement relates to better stewardship of water, because management, sir, is too narrow a term. What we're talking about is stewardship, but I'll come to management shortly, because these are outstanding issues that require the House to give them due consideration, sir, unless the values associated with aesthetic interests, ecological interests, sir, cultural interests, not just the narrow commercial bank-driven pressures that so many of our folk in the farming sector are facing in that part of the country. No, sir, the word improvement cannot be allowed to stand because it represents, through this legislation, absolutely no positive impact in, in, in terms of these other types of interests, sir, types of values that, that, that cannot be monetized cannot be monetised. And this piece of legislation in that sense, sir, is, uh, is, is grossly ill-named. Now let me come, sir, to commencement. So in actual fact, and the Minister needs to acknowledge that, once this piece of legislation, foul though it is, but we will, sir, hold the architects responsible next year, we will ensure that the voters who have been completely stripped of any opportunity to participate unless you're a well-heeled supporter of the current government, there'll be no participation opportunities, sir, that the commencement doesn't come to pass until the minister uses his regulatory power. So when the minister 
starts to use that level of regulatory power. So, Mr. Chairman, sir, time, John. Mr. Chairman. Sir, sir, when the minister starts to use that level of regulatory power, sir, there is only the flimsiest of opportunities for a full democratic oversight to be visited upon the minister's decisions. So it's not correct, sir, for us to allow this commencement section to stand as it is, because there is no way of assuaging the deep anxieties there in the Canterbury into Waiponamu as to when, sir, this ill-conceived and mean-spirited strike at the heart of our citizens' rights in that part of the country. Sir, there is no way where they can actually be informed either through mass media, through this House, as to when they are going to feel the fangs of the Friends of the National Party sucking as much water as possible for their narrow, dangerous, exclusive purposes. So, so this commencement section needs to isolate when does the Minister imagine that he or she is going to enact the necessary regulations to bring these odious provisions into law? When will they be operationalised? Because, sir, the point at which they're operationalised is when there's a call to begin to step up to the plate and protect the resources of this area. So when that regulatory power is exercised, we won't know. The families, the communities, and all variety of stakeholders in that part of the country will not be given, as they are in this House, an opportunity through their proxies to debate the issue of commencement. It will happen, sir, in a very surreptitious and a very sneaky way in some concealed room near the headquarters sir, of, or near the offices of the current ministers. And it's very sad, sir, that what ought to have been a transparent and very candid display in this House as to when these new rules, sir, are going to be imposed on the community. Now, sir, it might be said this is a very trivial. It might be said that this is a minute part of the legislation. But people need the certainty to know when they're going to see their water handed over to a very narrow, ill-defined, shadowy group of supporters of the current government who have forced them to overtake, overthrow democracy, overthrow democracy. So, so it's important as a standard of parliamentary democracy that this piece of information be inserted into the legislation, sir. Because whilst adding the royal assent in the legislative route is very important, sir, it's actually when the minister, through order and council, actually enacts the regulations. For those reasons, sir, this, although it does bring no great honour to us as parliamentarians, but it falls upon us to point out yet another further error in this legislation. And, sir, that lies in the fact that once you focus on the fact that the legislation is hopelessly misnamed, and you focus on the fact that the point at which it becomes operational is now hidden from the public. And so this is all about hiding things. This is all about concealing, pro this is all about concealing an allocation debate, concealing private property rights away from democratic glare. So anyone using water, anyone using water ought to be required to face the full glare of a transparent, sir, resource management process. And given that improvement will not take place, water is at stake, but the management, sir, will be furtive, and it will be undertaken by clandestine forces, sir, who fear democracy. And so these new commissioners, we don't entirely know who they are, other than Dame Margaret Baisley. They are being asked to undertake something in this legislation which will not lead to broad environmental improvement, sir. When you add the notion of environment and improvement together, you will not get the right result through this piece of legislation. This piece of legislation is designed to manage an improvement for a very narrow range of specific stakeholders. 
very narrow